Welcome back to the Zim Project, everybody. Hoping the lighting's not too bad in here today. It's a gray and overcast sky outside today. Coming through the window and the light's on over top of my head. Anyways, um, sorry, the title of the video is a little tiny, but a clickbait, yes. It's not a G3000 I built. It's not a G1000. Uh, the G1000 is done. Well, almost done. I forgot a little multiplex board. That forgot to order it. So it'll probably come out a week or two after this video does because it is actually done. I'll throw a picture up right here. I just had it up here testing it um, a couple hours ago. It's it's awesome. But this is, um, this is kind of the big brother to the G1000, less the controls. Um, this is the display that you would have seen in uh, a TBM 860. Uh, the Cessna, is it a Mustang? Is is their their one of their jets? Um, anyways, before the this is what came out for a multifunction uh, display before Garmin released the G3000 series. Um, it's not a it's not a 16 by 9 resolution like the G3000 is. It's a, a 4 by 6 resolution or aspect ratio, same as the G1000s are. Um, so let me give you a look at it here. So it's a big panel. Um, I just gotta lean in here right now because of course, uh, let me show you the back of it here. Um, circuit boards and everything are just kind of hanging off it right now with zip ties. This is gonna be mounted inside my uh, my GA panel, so I'm not worried about trying to set it up here anywhere uh, in the uh, current flight system because this is all changing here in the next week or two. Um, anyways, there it is. So we've got uh, secondary display. I'm uh, just cruising along here with the autopilot on in the uh, Cirrus just uh, north of Toronto. And that's what it looks like. So it's a it's a 15 inch diagonal monitor. Um, I've added the extra wording on it because initially this is a flight sim DIY design. Um, they don't put the Garmin label on theirs. Theirs just comes just blank. I edited that personally in the uh, um, in a online CAD software and added the Garmin wording there because well I wanted it. But yeah, here we go. So nice full screen, 15 inch. It's mimicking exactly what is on the uh, other display here next to me. And it's also got the 12 soft keys. If you watch, we'll push that soft key and boom, it flips back. That's the map view. Let me zoom in there. I should be using the screen recorder, but this is just quick to show everybody what's going on. You see the detail on the map turning on and off. And the same thing down here when I, I push that key, it's changing everything here. We'll go back to our engine view, all our gauges, we can do our weights and balance, how much fuel is on board. All the options we get in the sim right there. How hard was this to build? Um, it's not hard to build actually. Well, let me rephrase, it's not hard to build if you've got some uh, basic, basic mechanical skills, you know, can you put screws in, can you glue some plastics, do you know how to use a square to, because the panel is actually, you can tell by the size of this panel, this will not print on my uh, Ender 3. Um, I'm not even sure it would print on like a, a CR10 or something. Something's got like a 300 by 300 bed on it. Or sorry, even, like even bigger, even like maybe like if you've got an Ender extender, you got a 400 by 400 bed, you might be able to print this single piece. But uh, for me on my Ender 3, there's a seam here, here, and uh, there's one halfway down on each side here. And then one dead center in the middle between on the above the soft keys. So you, you gotta be able to use a square or a straight edge to level those to square those pieces up so you can glue that together to, to keep things filled in well. On the back, again, let me just show you back here. Just a couple of plates, nothing special. I did buy the uh, I did buy the circuit board for this, and uh, I believe I took uh, some just some videos and snapshots with my cell phone while I was uh, building it. Um, so yeah, uh, overall cost, this one was pretty reasonable. The uh, prints and the plans to buy from Flights and DIY, I think it was like 10 bucks. Um, the, the circuit board was, was really cheap because it's like a single board, nothing special. Uh, the push buttons, I buy those uh, on um, eBay from, uh, it's just a, I'm not sure where it is, a place overseas, whatever. The switches are like, I think I bought 100 switches last time. It was like 12 or 13 cents a switch. So, you know, 12 switches in there. There's not a dollar worth of switches. Um, 20 bucks for the Arduino board. The one that does hurt is this monitor because it's a 15 inch monitor and I'll put the part number here in the description. It's a 15 inch replacement screen for an HP laptop, I believe, an older one. 
Um, and as you can see, it's 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 a four by six design. I bought it from AliExpress or something like that. Um, it was 177 bucks Canadian um, with taxes, shipping. By the time we got here, it was right around 200 bucks for the screen. So yeah, that's the unfortunate thing because of the shape. Um, Flight Sim DIY, they they do have a thing in their Discord. They are working on a G3000. Unfortunately, I bought the kit and everything uh, before they made that announcement. So yeah, so well, what can you do, right? So I've been finished building this. This will go in the plan. Um, or sorry, this is gonna go in the panel. But yeah, excellent product. Um, print time on this was, was really quick. I don't think there's 20 hours of the print time altogether. Uh, took me maybe an hour to solder the switches together. Um, quick wiring, no big deal. I used one of the looms I've got. I bought for the uh, radio panel and I just pulled it out and just plugged it in there, plugged it in the Arduino. Like I said, this is gonna go inside the main panel I'm building, which I actually cut um, to go with a glare shield from a couple of videos ago, or maybe actually the last, no, two videos ago. I built the glass glare shield. I've cut the uh, MDF for the shape to make that. Now I've got to take this, lay this out, and start cutting holes in that. And then we will figure out how in the world we're going to mount, because this, of course, is all going to go. So all the SATEC stuff is going to go. I don't think this shelf is going to work anymore. Probably keep it on maybe for the uh, honeycomb yoke, and then somehow I'm going to work uh, the physical panel and above this to uh, add this. And uh, over it'll sit kind of over here. Got a G1000 going to go here, and something else. And let me zoom down. It's not a very good keyboard. This is the default Asabo SR22. You can see there is a keyboard there for manually entering all your flight information in. Um, there's a keyboard from Flight Sim DIY as well. I think if I can reach this behind me without knocking everything over here. I've actually printed that. Um, I don't know how well that's going to look if I get too zoomed in on it. But yeah, that's the faceplate for that. Um, everything's downstairs for that. That should actually be a pretty quick build for the most part. It's not a whole lot of parts. A lot of soldering because you figure there's a, it's a full keyboard. So 26 keys um, plus numbers. 0 to 9, so there's 10 more, so we're 36. A couple of plus and minuses. There's about, uh, there's 40 plus switches on this. Uh, each switch is uh, six connections, so, you know, 40 by 6, what's that, 240-ish solder joints I'm looking at. Um, plus it's got a eight-way uh, hat on it, actually, yeah, eight-way with a rotary and a push button. So there's like 13 tabs on it and uh, another dual encoder for the range control as well. So, yeah. 300 points to solder on that so that's going to be that'll that'll take a couple hours to get that done but yeah that'll be coming up here shortly the g1000 build is going to be coming shortly um how in the world i'm going to make this all together put together and fit is coming up shortly because for those who've been following along the channel you know i started this out by saying i had to finish my basement to find a home to put all this in well the basement is done Less a little bit of tiny paint touch up in a corner spot a couple spots got to put some outlet covers on but basement is done walls are up wired, um, painted, baseboard, computer network, everything's run. So fingers crossed, hopefully, I'm going to be moving the sim downstairs in the next week or so once I finish the last little bit of touch-ups, and then we will really get into uh, the build-up. Hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.